I don't know if you can pick these out, but birds have been flying north. They're big birds. Look like crows. Non-stop for four or five minutes now. Go flying. I don't know. I'm going to check and see what's going on. Live. This is one for the record. I'm Diana. And today is November 7th, 2012. It is Wednesday, hump day. And here are your updates for today. Obviously, I had a big problem recording off of YouTube. Heads up with uh, Internet Explorer. For some reason, every time I upload my video, make the changes, then I hit, you know, view view on page, and it says removed by user. No, I did not. I did not remove it. And I this is like my second official request that that I used their feed page. So I hope they uh, take care of the problem, whatever's going on, and stop censoring me. So obviously that's what it is. And also, heads up, uh, Mozilla Foxfire, that keeps going down. It keeps crashing. Alrighty then. So we're moving on. I did do some pre-recorded videos. So I don't know. I hope I hope uh, Google can take care of the problem. I know they have the technology to fix this problem. And I'm glad that I finally was able to get it fixed, that people can go into Creative Commons, you know. Okay, here are the headlines. Magnitude 6.3 earthquake struck off shore, northern Vancouver Island, Canada. Also, there was another um, video channel that said that the original one that was a 7.2 or whatever it was, it was first reported as an 8.5 and then then it was taken off but he snapshotted it but uh, I'll go into that one later on down the road I don't know how I came across that but some guy had snapshot that it was off of uh, the ROC or, or no one of them I think uh, which it whichever but I'm not sure but he said it was 8.5 and was showing data and then it was all downgraded and changed just for a heads up on that also, stereo satellites recorded eight CMEs over two-day period. Massive earthquake, M7.4 strikes, Champerico, Guatemala. Gosh, it's like way at the bottom and way at the top. I don't know. I don't know. Whoever, maybe, maybe Harp had a problem focusing in on something. I don't know. Heads up. Just heads up on that. Be prepared in California. Please, everyone be prepared. That's all I got to say. You know you're overdue, but on top of that, uh, something's going on. All right. Uh, magnitude 5.5 earthquake hit northern Iran. Also, world battleground video, thousand years of war in five minutes, northeastern to be weaker than expected, and, uh, That's it. That's all I'm reporting on right now. There is something called Helvetia Dream Time Lapse by Asandro Deli Bella. But alrighty then. Um moving on. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this. I did luckily make some other videos. I do have part of Obama's uh I was able to catch the last twelve minutes, which which were very amazing just listen to what he says so it was kind of it was, it was kind of a nice speech it was very interesting 
Very interesting. So, uh, here we go. Moving on. Moving on to the Extinction Protocol 2012 and beyond. Powerful 7.4 magnitude earthquake strikes Guatemala killing at least 48. 6.3 magnitude earthquake strikes near Vancouver Island. Also, California, Oregon quake. 4.2 quake strikes off the coast. Geologists find East Coast earthquakes travel farther. Earthquake fears prompt more warnings against closing Kits Coast Guard Base, K-I-T-S, whatever that is. Hope you're picking that up. Moving on. Earth needs to go. Now, we will disagree, sometimes fiercely, about how to get there. As it has for more than two centuries, progress will come in fits and starts. It's not always a straight line. It's not always a smooth path. By itself, the recognition that we have common hopes and dreams won't end all the gridlock or solve all our problems or substitute for the painstaking work of building consensus and making the difficult compromises needed to move this country forward. But that common bond is where we must begin. Our economy is recovering. A decade of war is ending. A long campaign is now over. And whether I earned your vote or not, I have listened to you. I have learned from you. And you've made me a better president. And with your stories and your struggles, I returned to the White House more determined and more inspired than ever about the work there is to do and the future that lies ahead. Tonight, you voted for action, not politics as usual. You elected us to focus on your jobs, not ours. And in the coming weeks and months, I am looking forward to reaching out and working with leaders of both parties to meet the challenges we can only solve together. Reducing our deficit, reforming our tax code, fixing our immigration system, freeing ourselves from foreign oil. We've got more work to do. But that doesn't mean your work is done. The role of citizen in our democracy does not end with your vote. America's never been about what can be done for us. It's about what can be done by us together through the hard and frustrating but necessary work of self-government. That's the principle we were founded on. This country has more wealth than any nation, but that's not what makes us rich. We have the most powerful military in history, but that's not what makes us strong. Our university, our culture, are all the envy of the world, but that's not what keeps the world coming to our shores. What makes America exceptional are the bonds that hold together the most diverse nation on earth. The belief that our destiny is shared, that this country only works when we accept certain obligations to one another and the future generations so that the freedom which so many Americans have fought for and died for comes with responsibilities as well as rights. And among those are love and charity and duty and patriotism. That's what makes America great. I am hopeful tonight because I've seen the spirit at work in America. I've seen it in the family business whose owners 
would rather cut their own pay than lay off their neighbors. And in the workers who would rather cut back their hours than see a friend lose a job. I've seen it in the soldiers who re-enlist after losing a limb. And in those SEALs who charged up the stairs into darkness and danger because they knew there was a buddy behind them watching their back. I've seen it on the shores of New Jersey and New York where leaders from every party and level of government have swept aside their differences to help a community rebuild from the wreckage of a terrible storm. And I saw it just the other day in Menor, Ohio, where a father told the story of his eight-year-old daughter whose long battle with leukemia nearly cost their family everything. Had it not been for healthcare reform passing just a few months before the insurance company was about to stop paying for her care. I had an opportunity to not just talk to the father, but meet this incredible daughter of his. And when he spoke to the crowd, listening to that father's story, every parent in that room had tears in their eyes because we knew that little girl could be our own. And I know that every American wants her future to be just as bright. That's who we are. That's the country I'm so proud to lead as your president. And tonight, despite all the hardship we've been through, despite all the frustrations of Washington, I've never been more hopeful about our future. I have never been more hopeful about America. And I ask you to sustain that hope. I'm not talking about blind optimism, the kind of hope that just ignores the enormity of the tasks ahead or the roadblocks that stand in our path. I'm not talking about the wishful idealism that allows us to just sit on the sidelines or shirk from a fight. I have always believed that hope is that stubborn thing inside us that insists, despite all the evidence to the contrary, that something better awaits us, so long as we have the courage to keep reaching, to keep working, to keep fighting. America, I believe we can build on the progress we've made and continue to fight for new jobs and new opportunity and new security for the middle class. I believe we can keep the promise of our founder, the idea that if you're willing to work hard, it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from or what you look like or where you love. It doesn't matter whether you're black or white or Hispanic or Asian or Native American or young or old or rich or poor, able, disabled, gay or straight. You can make it here in America if you're willing to try. I believe we can seize this future together because we are not as divided as our politics suggest. We're not as cynical as the pundits believe. We are greater than the sum of our individual ambitions, and we remain more than a collection of red states and blue states. We are and forever will be the United States of America. And together, with your help and God's grace, we will continue our journey forward and remind the world just why it is that we live in the greatest nation on Earth. Thank you, America. God bless you. God bless these United States.
People are actually like running from the cops. The cops showed up and there was like a big old group of people and they are dispersing out here in front of King Ken. I said it's about to get about 152 people out here. It's majority white people, so that's all I gotta say about that. Um, I don't know if they're mad or they're rioting or they're fighting or something. But this is a scene I'm trying to keep in. I'm trying to get as much pictures as I can. Yeah, we got some got some people out there. It's about a, it's a mixed group of people. They're just kind of standing here. I don't know if they're cheering or not. But. But yeah, this is the scene right now. There's some people on that side over there. There's a, there's a cop. He's taking people to go to the dorms right now. There's some people on this side over here, and they're like doing that number. Well, go across. He got some people right there with the pop pops and stuff like that. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna take the left. Here we go. There's some black people out there. Y'all need to be safe. Some other motherfuckers right there. I mean, other people. Excuse my language. They're just standing out around here. And I just want to say I'm so happy that we, we not only did this, but we, we did it right. You know, we, we took... You know, we, we took a little flack recently about this being in the Constitution, uh, but I think we learned, for those following along, during the Blue Book process, that we can't trust the legislature. Yeah. Right now, it is legal in the Constitution to possess and grow up to six plants. It will not be repealed on a whim. It will not be repealed for some little incident that occurs that is probably blamed on marijuana when it wasn't marijuana's fault. And it, it is permanent, and that's what we did. Um, and, and we've shown the nation and the world how this can be done, and now we're going to show them through regulation how it will be done, and, and the game's over. And we won. And, uh, and we're looking forward to moving forward in, in other states in the next two or four years. This is the beginning. This is not the end. The next states will, you know, they're on the horizon. We know there's going to be another state in two years. There'll be another state in four years. It could be Rhode Island. It could be Vermont. It could be Maine, Massachusetts, most likely California, and maybe Oregon. So we're going to move forward, and Colorado is a starting point. It's the tipping point, and it's not the end point. And we're back. Now we're going to the E and E News. And let's see what we got going on there. Sorry, it's taking me a long time. I've been working hours on this, so just so you know, they want it must want to see how dedicated I am, because I'm getting a little pathways of being able to do this. So 
I think it's just a test of dedication. Or well, I'm letting you know I'm very dedicated to you, my viewers, and to to letting you know what the real news is out out there. Alrighty then. To all of you, I'm very dedicated. All right, moving on. E and E news. Fukushima, eandee.com. TV 200% as many radioactive products returned to Japan this year than in 2011, says Russian report. Asashi, Fukushima Daiichi, a theme park? Tourists treated to reenactment of explosions, beeping Geiger counters, people crying out more. Oh my goodness. How honorable is that? Alrighty then. Moving on. Also, Caldecott live on TV as U.S. election called. About half of Japan is contaminated. Huge censorship on what's happening with Fukushima. Host interrupts to say Obama re-elected. TEPCO. Cooling system suspended at Fukushima spent fuel pool. Number three. Will not resume until weekend. Oh. Oh my goodness. You can see I was pulling my hair out. <laughs> I'm pulling it all out, trying to get this up here. Um, wow. And then how many hours does it take before it starts going into meltdown again? Or, well, it's already melt through meltdown, isn't it? Isn't it? Doesn't, won't that cause any more ex explosions over there? Maybe there's nothing to cool down anymore. It's so far down in the ground, I guess. I don't know. My goodness. All right, let's move on to the U.S. Canada. All right, here we go. U.S. Canada time conditions at three U.S. reactors from Hurricane Sandy were similar to what caused Fukushima disaster. Heads up. <coughs> Heads up. And then you can see the from yesterday the NRC steam vented into atmosphere through monitored release path at Michigan nuclear plant. No immediate safety concerns. Here's what's ha what what happened. Okay then. Here we go. Now. This was the only way to upload it. I know part of my picture is on the screen, but this is the only way to do it. Alrighty then. Bear with me. I just want to get you guys the real news out there already instead of seeing repeats of what happened yesterday. Also, uh, I attached a video marijuana legalized in Colorado and Washington. I'm attaching a bunch of videos. You know, I try to do that just in case I can't get uploaded. So take care. It's three days down. Two to go before the weekend. Also, there's uh, 43 days. Did I say that before? 43 days, 5 hours, 30 minutes, and 40 seconds before December 21st, 2012. 11, 11, Greenwich Mean Time. So you take care, and I want all of you to be prepared. There's earthquakes, especially in California. There's earthquakes above you, big earthquakes below you. It's like a California squeeze. They're putting a squeeze on California. All right. So be ready for anything. I want you to have water, food, gasoline now, pet food, your food, whatever you need, friends, family, everyone knows your plan, where you're going to meet if you got to leave the state. All righty then. Have your plans ready. Have your neighbors and friends ready. You see what I'm saying? Make sure everybody around you is ready. Alrighty then. And for those in in the in the cold, 
if you know anybody, a relative or something, get them out of there. Or if you have, or if there's someone that can take someone in, use Craigslist, use some some other, you know, internet mean or something. Get these, uh, get these people off the streets in the cold. The, you know, if you gotta take, you know, a family in, take them in for a short run. Don't stare at people and lock your doors and not let people in. You know, I mean, take in, you know, as many as you can, do it for a short run. Maybe you'll have a great new roommate out of it. You see what I'm saying? You never know. But don't, you know, at least take one person in. That's how it goes. We're going to have to look after each other. Alrighty then? You know, charity starts at home. Got it? All right, take care, and I'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. No matter what, I keep trying. And if, if I can't get up, I, up on there, I always leave you a message. I have not gone one day without leaving you the real news information. All righty, I'll find a way because I am dedicated. Take care. And be prepared. Alrighty then.